Hi, welcome to this video about the triple wave shaper by search modular by random source. I just got this module two days ago. There's not a lot of information. At least there's not a written manual that explains every CV input and well, the overall operation of this module. There's a saw wave coming from even VCO. I've attenuated the saw wave so it fits more with what this module would expect. And immediately you can see what this circuit was designed for. It was designed to make triangles out of saw waves. The output of the module send out unipolar positive signals. There's jumpers on the back of the unit that let you change this, but apparently this is more true to the original modules of the search modular system. So for now I'll just keep it the way it is intended. And before I start doing other things, let me just connect the same saw wave to the second part of the module here. And you'll see that this wave shaper does exactly the same thing as the one below it. And since I'm here anyway, let me show that this is the case for the upper one as well. So you can see there is no difference there. So back to the first one. The first wave shaper has an extra wave shaping circuit inside it. That's what the plus in triple wave shaper stands for. And you can send the signal through this extra circuit by turning up this attenuator. And then of course everything changes when the relative positions of the knobs change. Now let's add some voltage control to this. So the yellow trace is the looping envelope coming from METS. The blue trace is the saw wave that I'm sending in. And if it wasn't already clear, the red trace is the output of the triple wave shaper. So let's send in the positive cycling envelope to the first CV input here. You can see that uh, this affects the symmetry. I can turn up the amplitude of this envelope. So here you can go above uh, the 5 uh, volts. But sending in a negative voltage doesn't do anything. Let's turn up the attenuator for the second CV input before sending the looping envelope into that input. And you can see that this CV input does yeah, a different thing. the first 
first input. Let's head over to the second part of the wave shaper. The controls are a little bit different on this one. There's no attenuator for the first CV input, but there is an attenuator for the second one. And again, we can see that the VC2 or the second CV input does something different than the first. And let's quickly listen to the third one. This one has a CV attenuator for the first CV input, but not for the second one. Now all of this is of course really boring because, well, I showed you three times the same thing. But where this module really shines is once you start linking the several uh, shaper circuits. <laughs> This change the behavior of this module into something that's a little bit harder to understand at first glance. And let me explain what I mean by that. So, we're sending a signal into the first circuit here. I've linked this to the second circuit and also to the third circuit. But it's not like the outputs are normalized to the inputs by flicking the switch because turning up the attenuator for the input level doesn't do anything. And you can also see for the third one this doesn't have any function. But if I now... Well, let me take another VCO here. This might be completely out of tune. But as you can hear, you can mix in a second sound source into the circuits. So whatever you connect to the inputs is mixed together at the output. Now, what's weird is that when you connect a CV signal to one of the other stages that seem to be not active, you can see that this does have an influence on the sound. And the second CV input here. Now, Again, turning the input attenuator does not do anything. But by adding offsets to the CV inputs, there's something happening to, well, I guess the symmetry of the unit. And you can see that, well, you get really interesting changing timbres when you start using the module this way. Let's add another looping envelope, which is not going through data, to the third circuit here.
sound is just really interesting thanks to the sound and of course you can also use audio rate stuff for modulating the parameters Now if I connect this oscillator, which is just a sine wave coming from channel 3, you can hear that this almost sounds the same, but here you can use the third part to wave shape the sine wave that I'm sending in. And there's of course this plus one knob as well. Let's remove this. Let's connect the cycling envelope that we have on the scope here to input of the third wave shaper. And of course, because this module is yeah, made the way it is made, you can further increase the use of this by manually chaining the three wave shaper circuits and at this point you're actually feeding the output of the first one into the second one of the second one into the third one and then to the output let's remove the modulation so you have the first circuit with the extra wave shaper then second and the third let's quickly add some modulation again you can really connect it anywhere so always change things differently and what you then also can still do is link the channels it mixes the outputs but they're also chained together so yeah Well, this is going to be it for this quick and less methodical than I hoped video. I will get to the bottom of this at some point. Thanks for watching. Bye.